here. Well, now that you've got all your ingredients combined in there, you want to make sure that the egg sets evenly all the way around, scraping all of the cooked egg off of the bottom and kind of incorporating it into the center of the, the mix. That way, when we put cover it, put it in the oven, it's, it's I would say, 60% cooked and then it'll, it'll set up really fast within like a half an hour to 35 minutes. It'll be nice and golden brown and not yeah. real dry. But if you put it in there without doing this part on top of the yeah, stove, it's going to dry out. It'll dry out on the outer edges and the inside will still be raw. It'll it just it'll take forever. So. Might as well. I learned a long time ago you don't ever wait to do anything in the kitchen. You just go into If you wait, you're going to get behind the eight ball. <laughs> Made up in front of the store. Yeah. They'll put their plates up there. It's all plastic. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dan, you didn't throw anything in any of the food anywhere, did you? Uh, no, but I'm missing my watch. So you're, you're missing, missing, missing your, your watch. Chunky. You didn't know watch was in the frittata? I heard you were in the service. I, did, I wasn't a cook in the service. I was in the CBs, the construction part of the CBs. Yeah. And uh, when I went and got out of there, I went to the police department in Los Angeles. I spent 20 years on the police department. Really? But on the side, I would do cooking parties and things. So it was kind of a natural thing for me when I retired. Yeah. Worked at Chateau and Ron and learned a lot from the old German chefs up there. And right. So it was, it was really normal for me to go back right back into cooking. I started when I was 14 in a hotel. When I was in high school. In California? In, in uh, Missouri. Okay. I grew up. I didn't go to California until I got in the service when I was 18. Oh, it's coming out of the oven. We're going to check it. Not quite 35 that, minutes. You see how that released? Right. Didn't stick at all. You thought you had too much spray on there, probably didn't. It wasn't. Now, what are you looking for when you do this? So what I'm looking for is, is right now, I just want to break it loose from the edges. Make sure it's going to be free. And what I did, see how I'm going underneath as well? Right. Take a little bit, you see there's still raw oozing from it. Right. It's got about another five, see, and I took it out five minutes early, about another five minutes, that's going to be perfect. Five minutes, huh? Yeah. See the way I'm shaking that? If it doesn't, I mean, it's good and firm, so you know it's done. What we're going to do is we're going to turn it out. And just so not to embarrass myself on camera here, <laughs> I'm going to make sure that it's broken free. Right. And we'll just turn it out on this pan. And look at there, look at there. Now is the time to do the fun part. Around the edges. That's cheese whiz. This is a special culinary this is cheese whiz. You talk to anybody from Philadelphia, <laughs> and they'll tell you that it's not a Philly cheesesteak sandwich if you don't have cheese whiz on it. I know. I, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I go ahead and put, put it, on it on there. Anyway. It's the low cal version. One thing about these breakfasts, you know, nothing's low cal like this. You don't want it to be, do you? No. This, is, this is a breakfast Once a week, you want to eat when you're going duck hunting or something. You yeah. Know? You got to have a lot of calories in your body to there you go. You pull the, the trigger. You need to do and to make all those duck sounds mm -hmm. and stuff. <laughs> duck noises. Add a little mozzarella. It's good. Mozzarella. Now you can put any cheese on you want, whatever you like. I mean, provolone's a good cheese to use on it too. Yep. It melts really good. I just I, I'm partial to mozzarella on something like this because it just makes it nice and stringy and gooey. And so just cover it up completely. Well, this is what I do because I don't know. I, I just I love cheese. There's nothing better with eggs than cheese. I'll tell you. A little bit of more cheese.
frittata. Frittatas. So frittatas. The, 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 uh... the frittatas an Italian. It's, a, it's supposed to be an, it's an Italian omelet. Okay, that's on the egg side. Of the All right. Yeah. So then that. Yeah, these guys, they don't appreciate this. This basically had just different aesthetics. You know, to make it look good. Yeah, like if this was going to be sitting on a party buffet or something, you would want to make it look really pretty. If I had some large tomatoes, I'd make a couple of tomato roses and put them on top of it. And then after it comes out, it'll slice into 20, 20 pieces. So hang on, and we'll have that out of the oven again in about five minutes. All right, so how are we looking? Yeah, it's ready. Loogie, 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 loogie. The way I get even cuts is I always go to half. You see how firm it is now, but it's not yep. overcooked. Right. Cut it in half again. And each section gets cut into five pieces. Twenty pieces out of that. Get up here. Yeah. And usually it'll feed more because people won't take a whole wedge. But I can't see cutting it up into forty chunks because then it wouldn't be very pretty. I don't think. I take three or four pieces every time this comes up. What about you, Dan? Yeah, I'm. Uh, so go what, ahead. What have you ever made and put on the rotary buffet that did not fly? Well, I can't remember what didn't fly, but what I did, what I thought that wouldn't fly was right after Thanksgiving I had a bunch of turkey and dressing and mashed sweet potatoes left over and I made a frittata out of it. And I put it out on a buffet. Nobody sucked it up. It was gone. Everybody raved over it. <laughs> so we gonna have that again in November? Uh, I would almost bank on it, yeah.